and welcome to Bombshell Beats. I'm your host, Liv, and this is Jack. On Bombshell Beats, we're going to talk about everything music adjacent from the business side to festivals to live experiences. Today, we are spe- we have a specific topic, um, which is going to be camping in music festivals. All things camping, preparation, equipment, you name it, we'll talk about it today. Yeah. So yeah, let's just jump right in. So Jack, what is your experience like Right, so uh, our first uh, festival, camping festival, was uh, Bonnery back in 2022, Um, and it was just, it was a lot of fun. Um, It was not easy, though. It was just like, I think we got there on Tuesday, and then we stayed, yeah, it was, or Tuesday, no, we got there on Tuesday, and we stayed all the way till Sunday, and so... um, to be camping in a tent. It's know, a long time to be it's outside. It's a long time. It's a long time to be outside. Uh, you know, things get dirty. You start to get dirty and like, you know. So dirty. The bed you're sleeping on <laughs> gets dirty. It, it, it's it's a lot. And, yeah. But it's just, it's not a vacation by any means. Mm-hmm. But it's also uh, just an experience. And uh, everybody around is just super nice. It's super helpful. Um, but... You know, as far as camping, you can pack as light as you want. There's options to not even have a campground. Some people, yeah, they just go straight in and they just go to straight the in festival think, on yep, the inside. Yep, I just... think all they bring is some money to buy food, and you know, uh, and they'll just sleep under the tree or something like that. Oh, but dude, that's and crazy. then you know, you got everybody from that those people all the way to people in RVs. So, mm-hmm. um, but there's no of, right way to do it. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, but we're here the, today. The wrong way to do it is to be disrespectful to Valid. your neighbors. But anyways, that's a different story. Um, but yeah. We're here, though, today to tell you guys about how we are like our, how our experiences can help you be a better, yeah. <laughs> better camper. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, exactly. Um, yeah, let's talk. Let's talk brands, shall we? Yeah, we should. Um, yeah, we can do that. I think that, you know, as long as it's a a reputable brand and, you know, you've done some decent research on it uh, as t- far as tents go, then I don't think you could really go wrong. Uh, more specifically, uh, Ozark Trail, a.k.a. Walmart brand. Um, I think you can go wrong with, yeah. <laughs> with Walmart brand. Yeah, those things are um, not helpful. Well, it's like, you know, if you want to use... A Walmart brand camping equipment, that's fine. But just know that it's going to break, bust, or not survive, like, a Mm -hmm. storm. And that brings up another, that's another point, is the weather, at least in our experience, the last three years, one day has been just absolutely (laughs) horrible weather. It's, like, a lot of wind and a lot of rain, and everyone's tarps just go flying. And if you have Walmart stuff... God speed. Well, it's not so much about that. Um, I think it is rips, man. See yeah, rips. Well, yeah, absolutely the rips. Crappy Dude. steaks. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you need to have that stuff tied down. Um, you know, just prepare for any kind of storm. I think every single festival we've went to, there has been a storm, and uh, we've seen uh, canopies get mm-hmm. just lifted up into the air and uh, actually fly over a few. Uh, rows of cars and um i've dented and scratched other cars so that's a liability well the person next one year the person right next to us's car yep got scratched that was crazy yep it was a brand new car yeah uh but i i would back onto the topic of brands um i know a lot of people come in and uh they they fly into uh nashville like let's say they're going to bonnaroo they fly into a nearby airport and, you know, they plan on going camping, so they just buy all their stuff at Walmart. I mean, you know, if you plan on using a tent one time, nah, mm-hmm. that's not an issue. You know, go with that Walmart Exactly. Brand. But if you're looking for something where you're going to drive to and you can pack that, you know, go ahead and get that. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. I guess one drawback to buying the cheap stuff is just um, that it gets waterlogged. Yeah. Whereas better tents, I don't think get waterlogged as easily. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, or like those canopies when you're opening and closing them, mm-hmm. they can be 
Yeah. They can be. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, but I think for next year, we're going to be trying, last three years we've slept in tents, um, you know, just the steak and, you know, the ones with the uh, large <laughs> bendy poles. But I keep hearing that, you know, just bringing a cot and a mattress, um, inflatable mattress, and just sleeping under a, a pop-up tent is a lot better. For the uh, heat. For the heat, mm. yes. Um, yeah, uh, I think that, uh, what is it? Yeah, that's the other thing about the heat is that, unfortunately, if you have your tent <laughs> right in the open, right when the sun peaks up, and you're going to have a bad time because you're going to wake up at 7 a.m. every morning yeah. in a pool of sweat because, you know, you're just a, uh, that tent's like an oven. Mm-hmm. And so. most music festivals have, like, the afters, which is the, you know, from, like, 2 to 4 a.m., yeah. 2 to 5 a.m., 2 to 6 a.m., somewhere in there. Yeah. Where they're blasting music. So you're not really going to get a lot of sleep at that time. Yeah. So really from like 6 to when the sun rises is the only quiet yeah. you get without the sun. Yeah. And then the second the sun rises, you're just back in it. So mm-hmm. wearing those um, eye masks are really helpful. Yeah. Or just sleep tie mask. a shirt around your eyes or something. Like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Um, Earplugs, yep. earplugs, earplugs, earplugs all the time. Yeah, I mean, for sleeping, but most importantly, just for being at the music. I mean, yeah, facts. you don't want to lose your, you don't want to lose your hearing. Yeah. When you're 22, 23, 24. It's so loud. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk food, shall sure. we? A great topic. It is a great topic. <laughs> I've read a lot of different things. I love making food. I love cooking food. So, uh, true. Jack's my... a great cook. Yeah. Thank you. I um I bought a I bought a uh, Blackstone, uh, a portable one specifically. Well, just to have, and you know, so I can you know cook. for your birthday for my birthday, yeah. <laughs> um, to make great food while um while we're uh, camping and whatnot. Uh, so, uh, what is it? What's the conversation again? Food. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You know, you could go up, show up there, bring just granola bars or something, and just I do not recommend eat or yeah, and just eat festival food the whole week. So if you have the money, <laughs> yeah, if you have the money for that, absolutely. Um, but we try to be more conscious about that. I think I bought some. I did buy some uh, steak tacos, uh, just like the meat that was already pre marinated, and I just cooked it up on the blackstone, and they're the best steak tacos I've had. Yeah. Um, Super good. But, you know, and that, but that takes a lot of work to pack that. We had to buy an electric cooler, a 12 volt cooler to keep all that cold. Um, So it's a lot of work, but um, it's definitely kind of worth it in my mind because we're not spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on festival food. Yeah. I mean, what we're talking like 15 to $20 for barely any food. Yep. Barely any food. Yep. Uh, Yeah. I found that canned soup, canned, you know, spaghettios, whatever you want. Canned options are probably the easiest if you're using a gas grill. Yeah. Um, just because you can peel off the label and stick it right on the grill. Yeah, without using um, any pots or pans. Yeah, exactly. And then you just take a spoon and eat it out like that. Mm-hmm. Watermelon is another fun one. Yeah. Jack and I literally took a watermelon, cut it in half, and took a spoon. Yeah. And we're just Booting out yeah. watermelon. Yep. And Jack was also in a banana costume when this was happening. So imagine Jack in a banana costume. We'll throw up the picture. Sitting, yeah, maybe. <laughs> if I'm willing to edit that in. Um, just spooning out watermelon. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, you, can, you can't go wrong. Uh, obviously, try to prep as much as you can if you don't want to spend a lot of money on uh, on festival food, but you yeah. don't have to go overboard. If you're fine with eating just granola bars all week, by all means, it's true. Make it easy on yourself. It's true. I just like cooking. I love, I, I, especially when I'm drinking at yeah. music festivals. <laughs> I just, I love being behind a grill. So. Yeah, I think it's just important. Like, mm-hmm. it's so much money. Oh yeah, it's so much money for yeah. for many every party. Like, it doesn't matter how yeah wealthy you are like going in like you just be ready to drop some yep. money if you're hundred dollars in groceries or you know like five hundred dollars on festival probably well 
if you had breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or I don't know, most people probably wouldn't do that. They would just eat. Two you meals did a like day. yeah, two meals a day. That's like what thirty bucks. I don't know. Some people might just. I don't know. Yeah. It depends I, on I've noticed, the person. And I've also noticed that the food that you get from the vendors outside of the main area, like, for example, um, uh, Centeroo, uh At Bonnaroo. Yeah, Bonnaroo. Well, you yeah, have the vendors inside the you know actual Centeroo, the actual venue area, and then the ones on the outside. The ones on the outside give you a lot more food. Was there... I, that, those at Electric Forest? I can't remember. Uh, yes, there was. It sounds Yeah, weird. right outside the front gate. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. It makes sense. All right, well, I don't know if you will have too much <laughs> to say about this one, but probably mostly for my ladies. The getting ready station is very important. Mm-hmm. Very important. Because, I don't know, what do you think about this deck? Is like I feel like fashion at music festivals is kind of... A reason to be there. I mean, of course, everybody dresses up. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like a like a costume party. Yeah, if you part will. of the art, part of everything that just goes on. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's yeah. I think it's fine. I'm not too into all of that. Well, know. the banana costume. <laughs> yeah, the banana costume was something it's else. Fun. But, um, yeah. but yeah, I don't know. I think just uh, if you are into that, you have to think about getting ready. In something kind of cost to me like you have a lot of pieces and parts going on mm-hmm. and when you do that outside you have stuff just like flying everywhere like you know you're got your lashes over here you have rhinestones over here you have a headband over here you have a um, pashmina scarf over there you have you know your earplug is like there's yeah. so many accessories I think for many outfits yeah um so in my opinion I believe that if you're someone that likes to go all out, all out at these things, you should have a table, a nice, decently sized table mm-hmm. with a mirror. But be careful. They don't really allow glass at music festivals at all. So if you bring a mirror with glass, you just need to like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to be like yeah. scandalous and controversial. And but. Don't, <laughs> and yeah, don't, don't let your woman take up the whole dining area too. Yeah. Well, this is why I'm recommending a big table because it will help. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. your stuff will explode. Um, coming from experience, because I like to dress up. I will sit here and lie, but it'll be good. Oh yes, and another thing about getting ready slash clothes in general is a pack your outfits in Ziploc bags. He does it too, and it makes such a big difference. Oh, like yeah. everything head to toe, shirt, pants. You know, stockings if you do that, socks if you do that, underwear, everything, all in the bag, earrings, accessories. Mm -hmm. And then when you're done, bring a laundry hamper or a trash bag and throw your your stuff in there. Mm -hmm. It's a good idea. Definitely makes things a lot easier. Yeah, because you don't want clothes everywhere. It's so hard. You're out of your element and it just, yeah. I love this. I said, don't let your stuff fly away. That's my next bullet yep. point. Yeah. I, I I think immediately when we got to Bonnaroo, it was two hours into setting up our camp. And we were just kind of chilling out. And then just a slight, ever so slight 15 yeah, mile like, per hour when <sighs> gust came by. And, you know, what we were talking about before with a tent, someone's pop-up tent just took off. Took Gone. off 30, 40 feet and just hit another person's car and scratched it so yep. stake down your shit once you get there yeah like so much yeah multiple stakes if you have the option to drop it down mm-hmm. when you leave you probably yeah should do that oh, yeah i mean just the more secure that tent is to the ground the better mm-hmm. uh, you can't go wrong it's a big wind sail <laughs> yep it, exactly a and if the parachute. wind goes then it's gonna mm-hmm. Or, yeah. Yep. It's a parachute. Yeah, whatever. And then it goes far, too. How far would you say, like, when they fly, they fly? Oh, they can go. I mean, I've probably seen some go, like, I have no idea. Too far. Four or five hundred <laughs> feet. Oh, man. My next point. I have a hot take. A really hot take. Don't bring your dog. Yeah. Or, I don't know, controversial opinion here. I'm not too crazy about kids at some music festivals. Some I think 
I'm not sure if there's like 18 up rules, but I don't know. There's a lot going on. No, there's definitely people. I mean, it might be controversial. I don't know. It's a very controversial thing, and yeah, it there's there's so many things about it. Uh, I've seen some really messed up things with like babies. I've heard of babies being at the uh, the sunrise set. Where it's four in the morning and babies are there with the parents and um, that's... I, I guess it just depends on the person. Yeah. But I don't know, I'm super against dogs being there though. Unless yeah. it's like... Like first of all, even if you need a service dog, like... Mm-hmm. It's so loud. It's so hot. Their yep. paws are probably burning on... Like they need like shoes. Yeah. I don't know. There's probably a way to do it, but people I've seen with the dogs, they're just... Just yeah. the dog and the collar right. walking around on the blacktop. It's 100 degrees outside. And then they finally get inside, like, Bonnaroo, where there's grass, where the dog should be okay. But then you have loud music. Yeah. And the it's dog's, just, like, becoming deaf. It's just not a place for mm, pets. Uh, yeah. I just don't... I mean, you know, obviously it's a different story if we're talking about a service animal. Um yeah, but it's like, to, even then, what do you do? And how, yeah. you'd have to do so much to compensate. Aren't pets. They're you, true. They're, they're more of a tool than That's pets. That's true. So. But you'd have to do a lot to compensate for the dog. I suppose so, there. yeah. You couldn't just bring the dog as you would in a normal environment. Right. Or even like a child. If you did bring a child, you can't prep for them like you would a normal run of the mill right. camping trip. Right. But I don't know. That's a hot take. Yep. Not a lot of people people might disagree, but mm-hmm. that's my opinion. Yep. That's my opinion on the matter. You won't see me bringing my dog. Nope. Cleo <laughs> staying here. Mm. Okay. I feel like we should talk about crowd etiquette and what it means to not be a turd to other people in the crowd. Um, there's a term that probably a few people know but it's plur peace love unity respect and i think most of what people get at with plur is um just simply not to be an idiot in the crowd i think um at music festivals everyone is like surviving together it's a community aspect sure it's usually hot at these things so people are like you know trying to have a good attitude and not be a turd be a good person yeah um, but specifically in the crowd, though, I don't know, Jack, what's your opinion? How do you think you should get through the crowd? So an interesting thing to note is that you can definitely tell the vibe change throughout the week. Um, once everybody starts getting there, you know, Tuesday through, through um, what is it? Tuesday through Friday, everybody just has this awesome vibe. Everybody's happy. Um, that they're there and that they made it and they're just on the festival. It's a, you know, it's a great feeling to be back out there, but once it starts to hit Saturday and especially Sunday, uh, people are starting to get tired. They want to go home. They start feeling dirty. True. And I think that's like an important part during the, during that Saturday night, especially on Sunday, you know, you gotta check yourself and, remind yourself that you're still there and that you got to be courteous to others mm. even if you're feeling tired and dirty don't be grumpy pants exactly because ev- yeah everyone feels the ick yeah towards the end mm-hmm. but if you're grumpy and also i think it's just a mindset thing if you're like telling yourself you feel really bad then you're not gonna have a very good time yeah of course of course yeah but i think that it is a lot of positive self-talk Mm-hmm. throughout the whole experience because i'm yeah if you don't like i'm not gonna lie y'all it's kind of miserable sometimes uh, with the heat i would say yeah. and being like overstimulated sometimes I'd say um, so, yeah. but it's like those of us who can positive self-talk and be like okay well maybe my environment is really hot right now but i literally have my favorite artist on a stage and a great community of people yeah. to yeah. spend my time with Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Crazy. Mm-hmm. I also think, I don't know, kind of tracking back to moving through the crowd. People who shove. <laughs> it's going to happen. People who shove through the crowd. Um, 
sometimes it is necessary, I would say. Sure. If you have, like, a full-out emergency, sure. Go for it, girl. Push your way through that crowd and get out. But if you're just, you know, meandering around like most of us do, you want to get closer, you want to get further away, you want to go more to the middle, you want to go more right, you're trying to friend your friend, trying to get to a totem or whatever, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like... Tap on the shoulder, excuse me. Tap on the shoulder, excuse me. And you just keep doing that. Yep. And you tap on the shoulder, excuse me. And people will be so much more receptive than if you just brush by them like that. Yep. Yeah. I feel like some people, whenever you get shoved up against, like people at music festivals are really good at dancing in their own space and not trying not to touch you as much as possible. It's not like the club where you have some dirty person like accidentally... Mm-hmm. grinding on you ew gross um but yeah cool i don't know yeah mm-hmm. i agree is there anything else you have to say about camping setup specifically no nah, i don't have anything on the top of my mind mm. what do you feel like is the most valuable thing that you've brought to a music festival in the camping world food food <laughs> It's a good one. What's yeah. your favorite meal of all time? Cooking there? Mm-hmm. Oh, um, probably, uh, yeah, probably a, uh, bacon, egg, and cheese bagel. Bacon, egg, and cheese bagel. Yeah. What's your favorite thing to eat? <sighs> Dang. It's so tough. There's been, there, you know, there's been a lot of good mm-hmm. that really has. Yep. I honestly, I'm a big breakfast gal. I really am. Mm -hmm. So probably just some bacon, eggs, hash browns. I remember that one year you brought those boxed hash browns. Mm -hmm. Mm. That was pretty good. They really were. They really were. Very good. Well, I think that we can go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, Mm -hmm. This is our first podcast. Ah, So hope you liked it. Let us know what you think. Um, and let us know what you guys would like us to talk about next. Yep. But yeah. Cool. Thanks for listening in and have a great rest of your day or evening. Bye. See ya.